Hello, uh, my name is uh, Yulia, Yulia Sumzina. Здравствуйте, меня зовут Юлия Сумзина. Uh, and I'm the author of uh, Voce dell'Opera. Maybe you have uh, seen my articles, some of my articles. And today we are going to talk uh, with Evan McKee. Waiting a little. We are waiting a little for Evan. I hope you hear me well. Я надеюсь, меня хорошо слышно. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Uh, I'm fine too. I'm glad to see you today so, live. Yeah, here in Canada it's good morning. <laughs> But good for you... Good morning to you. For you, it's not good morning, right? Yeah. It's yeah, добрый вечер. Добрый день. Добрый день. Yeah. It's right. More or less. And um, I'm glad finally uh, we, uh, we are starting Me too. our talk, our conversation. Yeah. Uh, and um, firstly... I wanted to ask you, how do you spend uh, your uh, quarantine time and uh, how is Canada during this quite difficult time? Well, I'm lucky to be in a place where they're taking, uh, taking quite, preca like quite a few precautions to make sure that everybody is uh, monitoring the situation before we start to re-socialize again. <laughs> uh, I think everybody's definitely looking forward to dancing together again um, and socializing together, but we are trying to be creative, like with you now. Uh, I'm happy in some ways that some relationships have been brought together online and uh, I've been working with Dance Magazine in New York and uh, doing some dance trivia just to brighten, lighten the mood for everybody. And of course, I do my own ballet bar every day. Today, I did uh, the ballet bar of Vladimir Malachov and Ziana Vishnova together. Um, yes. Because I'm a big fan of both of them and worked with both of them. So that was really fun. And uh, yeah, I tried to find a different ballet bar. And then I just also really enjoyed teaching uh, private classes for students and for kind of a sil silver swans who are a little bit older as well, who maybe... Uh, are more mature, but they are afraid to try dancing, but sometimes it's a perfect way to personal train and get the posture. And so I really enjoy that. It makes, it makes me feel like I'm dancing again. So, yeah. And I'm reading a lot, tons of books. Oh, what, yes. what are you reading, for example? Well, what I really like to... advise us? Uh, well, I, I assume everybody on here is an opera or ballet uh, fan or patron and I just really like to read about the history of arts and ballet so it, there's no limit you know so right now I'm reading about Isadora Duncan uh, which is a very very layered story it was really well documented so and also it's not boring <laughs> yeah. so uh, but I, I have the most important <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, I do some, some dance trivia quizzes and yesterday some, uh, somebody was watching on, on the comments, they were asking me the story of Bakshi Stradalski Fontane and I was like, I don't really know the story very well. And so I'm starting to also learn a bit about that and go back to my Russian, Russian school heritage and yeah. So uh, yeah, we have something. a question. Did you... Um, see ballet, uh, ballets about uh, Isidora. Uh, yeah, I saw Lynn Seymour at the Royal Ballet. I mean, there's a video of her. Uh, I think it's I think it's by Kenneth Macmillan. It's just a solo, but um, I, I believe it's Kenneth Macmillan and not Frederick Ashton. It's Macmillan probably, and he created something for Canadian ballerina Lynn Seymour at the Royal Opera House. Uh, that was many years ago, but. Um, I think it's still performed, and um, there are some movies. There are some movies about her. So, uh, of course, there's a 
a type of Isadora Duncan era. So I, I didn't know, for example, she went to Moscow before and she had a school there and many things that I didn't know about her. So also about her personal life. So it's interesting to find out. And I would love, for example, if like John Neumeyer would do a ballet about her or something like that would be really cool. But we'll see. Yeah, he, does, he has so much. John Neumeyer is a genius. Uh, yes. In choreography and uh, yes. I loved uh, his ballet so much. Um, and uh, what uh, of his ballets are your favorite ones? Well, I, I've been watching him for many years because he's. I was a dancer in Stuttgart Ballet, and once you start in the Stuttgart Ballet, you never really, even if you continue on to other uh, ways of developing your technique or your family life you never really leave so um it's nice to see all the choreographers like john neumeyer and william Forsyth and yuji killian uh, who all kind of went through the uh, stuttgart school if you if you want to say that uh so john neumeyer I, I saw his early choreographies and i knew that he had a special way of uh theatrical design like a uh, stage design and blocking with the actors so it made perfect sense, like he could do films too, right? And um, he did do Chameleon Dama as a film, but um, I really like Lady of Camellias to watch because there are so many roles and the story just is so touching. Uh, but to dance, I really enjoyed uh, opportunities that he gave me, things he saw in me that I didn't even know about myself. So uh, like he has a ballet called Nijinsky and he cast me as in the role of Serge Diaghilev, which was really cool because, I mean, it's not an easy task to portray like the, the sort of king of 20th century uh, ballet, right? Like, um, and also physically, we had to figure out how to make, make it work. So a dancer can portray Diaghilev, who was not a dancer. Um, so that was really cool. And then when he came back, we did it again in Canada, National Ballet of Canada. And he cast me in Diaghilev and also Petrushka, who shows up in the ballet. So they're very different. They're pretty much the opposite ends of the ballet because one is very in control, but also losing control. And Petrushka is always trying to gain control over the situation and fighting and trying to understand. So, um, so it was really cool, and I danced his Othello as well, his Iago in Othello, which was the, mo the most uh, disturbing role I've ever played, which was really cool as an actor to figure out how that works with the body. And um, and I danced De Grier as well in his uh, Lady of the Camellias, which is so touching. The music yeah, of it's Chopin. Yeah, one of the great, great, really great ballets. What's, what's your favorite? Um, the Little Camellias, because yeah. um, I saw uh, it uh, in the theater in the Paris Opera uh, mm -hmm. in um, 2018, uh, okay. the Christmas Day. The Christmas really? Day. Really? Yes. Okay, well, so it's quite a nice story to go yes, to Paris it was Christmas really, Day. Really, really, really um, magical, magical ballet, magical evening, and it was performed <laughs> uh, by um, Matthew Gagnon and uh, Leonard Bolak, uh, and it was really amazing. It was really amazing, and yeah. um, I uh, I love uh, all, both ballets uh, oh. based on the um, uh, Alexander Alexander Dumas. Uh, Nobel, uh, Margaret okay. Anderman and uh, the Lady of Camellias, but I think um, the Lady of Camellias is um, even, it's really breathtaking story and uh, yes. I... Um, have, you, have you seen uh, John Neumar's Anna Karenina? Yeah. Because yeah, that I was saw, really uh, interesting. I saw some videos just but I can imagine um, all the uh, all the image and um, all the impression, uh, and um, I think uh, John Neumeyer, um is uh, one 
of the uh, modern choreographers who are inspired by the epoch uh, of the Aguilar, uh, of uh, Le Balerus. Um, Definitely the, very well. As, as a person, as a person who is also uh, inspired by this epoch, I can say um, I understand uh, him uh, fully, and I understand you. Um, and um, uh, except for, um, except uh, the Diaghilev's epoch, uh, who are your inspirational figures for you? Who are the inspirational figures for you in uh, uh, ballet history? Maybe well, in it's a really it's a really good question because uh, I love in school in the Toronto School National Ballet School. That's where I was born. Uh, not in the school, but <laughs> after auditioning for the school, I spent some yeah. time there. Um, and really one of the best things about the school for me was spending time learning history of art and ballet. We had some uh, two, two wonderful older ladies who had been teaching for a long time in the school. So they were able to understand how the pedagogy works and how to get yeah. everybody's attention when we're talking about ancient Greece and where dance maybe first was presented and theatricality and Apollo and Dionysus. And um, so that was really cool. We spent a lot of time in there and I really enjoyed that. So when I went to a more Russian school after in the Kirov Academy in Washington, DC, and then in John Krankel School in Stuttgart, I really took that with me, that history of art and ballet. But on a personal note, I think that um, I was more inspired by like, movie stars or theater actors in plays um they just if someone gave a really amazing performance it really wanted made me want to express that with my whole body because i was still dancing at home watching mtv and stuff <laughs> um yes. in the in the 80s and 90s but um when i would see someone portray like completely embody a, a new role like, you know, Meryl Streep or someone who's really well known for doing those tricks with their intention, you know, and making yeah. it so yeah. really believable. Real, involved. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So some of those actors made me want to actually try to try to see what would happen if I would do that through a physical language. So it wasn't that I that I saw ballet like a nutcracker and I fell in love with, you know, tutus and tights. It was more that I saw for the first time that dance could also be like completely two to three hours of people relating to each other only through physical expression and the audience yes. complete, completely comes with you. And that just was the first time. So, I mean, I have so many, because I study it, I have so many mentors and role models and people who are no longer with us. But uh, I definitely think my teacher, Pyotr Pestov, uh, from, from Moscow, yeah. uh, came to Stuttgart um, uh, after the Bolshoi Academy, the Moscow Institute of Choreography. He came to Stuttgart and uh, he really gave so much to, to us boys, you know. He taught Vladimir Malachov and Nikola Tsitskridze and yeah. Alexei Ratmansky. And, just a bunch of, uh, I think he really, he really liked us to use our minds as much as we could. Yeah. It was a little bit psychological and he would ask us questions about the music that we we're dancing to, or he would let us give a recommendation of what we would like to hear. And so he gave us some responsibility over our own technique and our own way of thinking about ballet. So he was a mentor for me, definitely. I'm so lucky that he, that he, I saw him and I worked with him at the end of his life, so it, it will yeah. stay with me forever. Yeah, and I think uh, the great previous person. great person and completely, I I didn't speak any Russian when I first met him, and he makes jokes all the time, so it was like I had to understand. Uh, first of all, what his class is very difficult, one of the most difficult, and then the Russian language, which I wanted to learn anyway but I was learning German at the same time. And then he would always joke, like sarcastic jokes. So I had to try to understand the tone of Pyotr Pestov. The tone was really important. So another person who really inspired me is uh, Reed Anderson, who was the director of Stuttgart Ballet for many years. 
and the National Ballet of Canada as well. So I grew up watching him and, and understanding that it's really still possible to have modern day Diaghilev type figures who are able to really, really inspire generations of not only dancers, but choreographers too, and set designers and have a definite uh, a look for a company. So he works with the John Cranko repertoire. So um, I didn't expect to ever dance something like Onyegin, for example, my favorite ballet, but uh, I, I, I ended up being cast in uh, Lensky and Vladimir Lensky and uh, Evgeny Onyegin. So I just feel so blessed, not only to be cast, but he spent a lot of time with me and my partner, Lex, yeah. showing the choreography, the lifts, you know, uh, all yeah. of the sensitivity between the characters. And I'm just so lucky, so lucky it's about that. Important. It's really something that will stay with me. Yeah, yeah. and we have a question about was he strict in a very cruel way or no? Who? Uh, Piotr Pesky. Who? Uh, uh, in a in a what? In a um, in a cool way? Was he very strict? Was he very strict or not? Absolutely, absolutely. But he was not but... stricter than the ballet ballet technique itself. Yeah. Ballet technique itself yeah. is the strictest, and uh, I think he just really wanted us to understand what does it mean to wake up in the morning uh, when you're tired and go to put yourself into a situation that will be good for you. Even yeah. if it feels yeah. like we were sometimes like dragging our feet coming into the studio, but uh, no, but he was, he, was, he was a little older when I met him. So maybe he had sort of figured out his tone and balance, but, but uh, he was just, no, he used his words so well. Like, so we got a full picture of what he's interested in and there was not really any crazy stuff happening. It was more just, let's, we had to look into ourselves to see what is difficult and where the sensitive spots are. And uh, it was, a, I think, very good education in, uh, in that respect. So I really miss him. And I love talking to his students yeah. as well, still today. And so. um, a little bit more about Russia. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about your experience uh, from Moscow and St. Petersburg, you performed uh, here in Russia, and um, yeah. how do you like it? Uh, well, I think uh, I think I first came to dance uh, a gala for uh, honoring Pyotr Pestov at the Stanislavski Theater. That was my first time, but I met so many international friends like Maria Kochetkova and. Uh, and uh, so many dancers that I had never really worked with before. Like I got to see Katerina Krisanova and uh, Semyon Chudin, my friend from Moscow. And, and I think I met Olga Smirnova for the first time. And uh, after we met, they, uh, a lot of people start to want me and Olga Smirnova to dance together um, yeah. from Bolshoi Theater. And, um, and it took a long time because of schedules and we both have many other dancers we like to work with and we have directors who had plans for us. So, uh, but eventually we danced together in New York. Actually, we were invited to the Youth America Grand Prix in New York at the Lincoln Center. And that was the first time we were allowed to do Onyegin, the last part of the for a gala, which was, which is not easy to get the rights to dance. So, we worked a lot and she worked so hard. She came to Stuttgart and so that was great. Another time um, was when we did an exchange with the Stuttgart Ballet and the Bolshoi Ballet for Onyegin. So I was lucky to dance that at the Bolshoi Theater. Uh, I was, can you imagine, I was so nervous to be a Canadian guy dancing this great Pushkin <laughs> role in, in front of people who really, really know the story and also the art of ballet technique. So um, everything, I also felt confident about that because I felt like everybody already knows in the audience. And so, so let's just go with it, you know? We just have to 
uh, I have to rely on this character that somebody wrote yeah. uh, many, many years ago and the choreography and that was, they were there for me. So my partner, thank God, was excellent and my uh, supporting cast, Friedemann Vogel and Anna Osipchenko and Alithia Amadrian, excellent. Um, and then I moved to Canada right after. So um, I moved to National Ballet of Canada to be with my family and to actually work with some of the choreographers who I had started with in Stuttgart, like John Neumeyer. So I continued working with him in Canada. Um, yeah. So after that, I was invited to Mariinsky Ballet uh, to dance uh, Giselle. And that was really cool because I was able to spend some time there. Because usually you go and go and you're not able to spend as much time as you would like. But uh, in St. Petersburg, I had, I think, two or three weeks. So I could really wow. go and yeah. do a lot of coaching for as many hours as we want. So that yeah. was so cool. <laughs> and the level of dancing was absolutely uh, astonishing. Um, and discipline was incredible. And the feeling of the theater, maybe the spirits from before, was also very prominent. Same as Opera Garnier, right? Uh, yes. Similar, yeah. similar, similar tone in, in the frequency. My two favorite theaters, my two favorite okay. companies. Yeah. Another person who really has been um, inspirational for me, who I did not expect to connect with me, actually, is yeah. a ballerina named Diana Vishnyova who oh, I'm sure you know, um, sure. and she, I guess, had seen a performance I did in a gala in, in Paris, but she didn't tell me, and she wasn't backstage. Uh, it was at Champs-Élysées yeah. Theatre, and I took a piece by a young choreographer called Louis Steens from Stuttgart Ballet that I didn't know if anybody was going to know who he was yet. Uh, I think they do now, but... It was just fantastic to do something completely like contemporary and new. And I always feel like Champs-Élysées is a great theater to do that because of its crazy history a um, hundred years ago. So yeah. Diana Vishnuva happened to be there and I didn't know. And uh, a year later, I got a phone call from, from Paris Opera again, who I had already worked with. And they said, would you like to come back for a third time? I oh. said, like, of course, of course, but how and wh with who and what's the, what's the deal? And they said, Diana Vishnova will be dancing with us and she would like to dance with you in Alexei Radmansky Ballet. So I said, okay, but I have not danced anything yet from Alexei Radmansky. I just know we have the same teacher and I respect him very much. But um, they said, it's okay, Diana knows how to describe choreography yeah. and Diana would like to work with you would you be excited about that and I just said absolutely it was incredible to work with her she's one of the greatest ballerinas really and and then working with her context festival has also been very exciting yes. with National Ballet of Canada the whole company after I, I worked with her the whole company of National Ballet of Canada um, negotiated with her and we ended up doing Crystal Pites work uh, as yeah. a full company in Russia, and that was just last year, actually, so that was incredible. Um, unfortunately, this summer I was supposed to dance with Diana for a month <laughs> in her incredible festival, but I think uh, we have to postpone that. So, yeah. but she's she's really been wonderful. So, yeah. yes, she's the symbol of Mariinsky ballet, of Russian ballet, modern Russian ballet and of St. Petersburg. And um, every time the performances are absolutely amazing. And um, so many people uh, want to see uh, her on the stage of Mariinsky every time. And there yes. are no empty seats. Uh, the um, audience is uh, crowded, uh, absolutely. For example, well, last me... time here in the festival. Yes? Yeah. To, to me, I like that Diana has really had an incredible dancing career, yeah. but she doesn't, she doesn't want to accept traditional limits. So I think she's very uh, understanding of historical ballet knowledge in Russia, but also um, maybe some younger minds who would like to 
think about things in an abstract way and have an abstract uh, abstract approach in Russia you know there has not maybe been for many many years that kind of contemporary approach to combining them and uh, yeah. I think she's really in a good position with her her team around the world to do yeah. that so so that's really cool and one ballerina who I who I I'm so sad I never worked with was Uliana Lopatkina because she was one of she was in the same ballet gala that I saw when I was a, when I was a young boy and uh, she was dancing beside Diana Vishnyova so uh, Diana and Uliana and can you yeah. imagine we were so Legend. inspired as, as kids you know uh, in Toronto actually was the gala yeah. Wendy Whelan was there Igor Zelensky was there um, well, we just had a lot of huge <laughs> big personalities who really inspired us. And I thought, wow, that would be interesting to, to work with a ballerina like that, so. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you lived uh, in Europe for quite long periods of time, then returned to yeah. Canada, uh, where, uh, where you were born. And uh, do you feel some differences between two continents, maybe in uh, the working style or lifestyle? or such traditions? Well, Canada's huge. <laughs> Canada's huge. I haven't even been to the other side of Canada before. It's it's like traveling across, it's like traveling to California from Toronto. So it's, it's. Uh, I have quite a bit of family in French Canada and uh, Ontario, which is where I live. Um, so we are able to communicate and I get to see a little bit about the bilingual aspect of my country. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know anybody in Vancouver almost, so I have to go visit. <laughs> um, but I like the way the Canadian country is so, uh, still so kind of open, unexplored, and uh, it's a young country, uh, younger than maybe ballet itself. <laughs> um, so, but then of course, going to Germany specifically uh, for my years of training, uh, was really cool because Germany has such a strong uh, way of working and work ethic history. I really liked uh, I really liked dancing there and pick, picking up on some of the philosophy from German and French previous century. Um, it was still I feel like deeply embedded in the conversations that people were having. They were going to the theater. And that's really, uh, that really stuck with me there. Not that I can't have them in Canada, it's just there are different discussions sometimes. Um, and uh, maybe a different kind of psychology, uh, psychological approach in some ways. Uh, but, you know, dance is also a global community, so I'm, I, I'm always happy to celebrate the history of each country, but also understand that's uh, uh, happy national dance day today exactly that's exactly <laughs> yes. what i wanted to say yeah i a little bit forgot <laughs> <laughs> it's okay we can keep dancing today and remind ourselves yes and uh, um about dancing about maybe acting um mm. for you as a uh, for uh dancer with a marvelous technique is it uh, difficult uh, to uh, combine the technique and uh, the real um, natural sensuality on the um, stage? Because uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, every belly with a plot needs this, but uh, not all the dancers can to combine mm. this uh, in uh, Mm, right proportion, <laughs> I think. Well, I think you're right about the proportion. The proportion is definitely interesting to see. I know dancers who are incredible personalities who really have a hard time uh, with the ballet lifestyle because of the regimented coming to class. Working like an athlete is not easy for them. So some friends I have who are incredible actors really had trouble with the the doing the same thing every day and improving and waiting for yourself to improve and the patience yeah. for that 
And of course, I know dancers, ballerinas who I've worked with as well, who are really athletes. Like they really impress me because they're able to do the same triple pirouette every time without a partner, uh, really almost lifting up the partner in some ways because of, because of the trust that they have in the athleticism. I really like that too. Um, so finding some, finding an in-between is actually pretty natural because of the, being inside a ballet company is the best way I think to find your footing and who you really are because you're able to compare yourself in a positive way with people you're dancing with. So, and have dialogue and figure out what works and what doesn't work. <laughs> so I really like the ability to fall down, get back up again um, as an actor, as a dancer, because my technique is really not perfect at all. Like it's, I really just enjoy the fact that it can get better every day. Like it's possible if you work hard and, um, and have the right teachers specifically. Uh, I'm lucky about the dancers that I dance with because if I'm dancing with a male or female who we're, who has a, a special, maybe a little more experience sometimes or uh, has cultivated their emotions a little bit and understands what they would like to show on stage, then it's really cool because it's just like completely natural. It doesn't even feel like you're acting, right? Like. Uh, I don't take it as seriously as a craft acting on stage. I know it is, but it's more just like working with incredible choreographers or directors, things just come. It's like very natural, like it's, it's expression. And uh, like working with John Nomaya, it's, it's difficult because it's challenging, but it's not difficult in the sense that you don't know what he's looking for. He's very specific about guiding you to find your own principles in the uh, art form. So I, I think it's just every movement for me starts with learning choreographer. It always starts, starts with the choreography. It starts with a, like an emotional kind of resonance. And then from there, I'm able to improve my classical technique, which is weird because I know a lot of people that are the opposite, that they would like to start learning the steps first and then build on the acting on top. And that's probably smart. <laughs> it's just not the intrinsic to me. So I really, I feel it's easier for me to remember steps if I have like an emotional connection, even if it's not too dramatic. It's just, I understand like if there's a different note or tone to every single gesture, and then I can remember the ballet. <laughs> but if it's only counts or something, it's more difficult. Only counts and steps, it's much tougher for me. <laughs> Personally, yeah, uh, and uh, you are a really intellectual person. Um, now there are great uh, plenty of possibilities uh, to get education and self-education. Uh, what do you think about this? And uh, is the education important for dancers? Uh, which education? Uh, it's uh, uh, systematic education. I, I mean, not a dancing education. I mean, uh, education. Uh, yes, out of dancing. First Self of all, I think that systematic. Okay, so I think uh, the academic side of my profession and the history history of my profession is already s says so much about humanity, and also what's coming next, working with choreographers like Wayne McGregor, who are, uh, who have been through many universities and are scientists. Uh, yeah. And he bringing that into the world of the theater and inspiring all of us to understand, oh, wow, we're doing ballets now about artificial intelligence and combining that with the history of DNA. Uh, can you imagine like, 50 years ago, I never would have, I wasn't alive, but I can't I imagine that that would be sort of um, as interesting maybe to a larger population. And now it really is like on all of the TV shows and uh, it takes a special mind to create something interesting from that point of view. So um, working with Wayne McGregor has been wonderful um, and he's definitely inspired me to 
keep searching through the dance because you can find a lot of answers in, in the dance. But yeah, I definitely love to study anyway. So I, I got a certificate at Oxford University last year, um, but it's, it's for executive leadership. So it was just it, the, the, the understanding of um, how certain models of education and uh, leadership work in different countries. And um, I it's did one in France and one in, in England, yeah. So it's all online, but it was cool. It was really interesting to do that. So um, it definitely, definitely helped me understand the leadership of all of the companies I've been in and, um, and, uh, and other companies as well. So, but uh, I think pedagogy is very important, very difficult skill that people don't really, not a lot of people take too seriously. Uh, some people do, of course, but you can really tell, I think, when someone has learned how to teach and speak to, uh, to young dancers, any dancers or any, um, anybody. It's just dancers show, react quicker, maybe physically, <laughs> so you can yeah. see what's working and what's not working, which is cool. So bless all the great teachers out there. And a little bit more about your pedagogical uh, experience. Uh, you are involved in some social projects. Tell us about them a little, about your uh, social work. Um, well, uh, it's, more, it's more just that I, I moved back to North America and I felt like uh, it was, I turned 30 and I felt like I'm not doing anything uh, outside of my job that is... Uh, that is giving something of myself further. So uh, I already feel like ballet dancers are giving quite a bit of themselves and reciprocating with the audience. Um, but I wanted to understand more how I can use dance specifically uh, in other ways to maybe help people who are not able to come to the theater. Uh, so I, I thought uh, I would start to study neuroplasticity which is something that I started to learn about through working with Wayne McGregor. And uh, then I was able to be introduced to quite a few uh, friends and friends in, in Toronto who, around the world actually, who really believe that you can rehabilitate from some very difficult uh, physical ailments through dance and through movement. And it, I saw some cases that really changed my way of thinking. And I thought, oh, I can use this for my ballet technique too. <laughs> um, there's no limit in terms of how much we can develop ourselves and each other. So, um, so I just volunteered myself to, to sort of work with some, um, some people who, who, are, who have handicaps and are maybe uh, having some challenges with, uh, with drugs or something has happened no. to them that has gives them a um, a pause with their brain so they may be going through a difficult time and uh, I think it's tricky to treat those people and I'm not a doctor so but I feel like uh, it was important to me to understand how to work with uh, people with addiction or mental health issues uh, in a way yeah. that's as an outsider and a volunteer and so I wanted to see how their bodies moved as well if we just tried to try to create a choreography together so we did so it became like a volunteer recreational therapist kind of position and i worked really well with the therapists that i got to know who are professionals and it just it was something that i needed to try to uh to d use dance in other ways yeah. so uh, i'm still working with some doctors privately um, just to understand how the brain, what the brain is really doing when we're dancing. And uh, there's quite a bit of research out there. So it's, it's really inspiring to see. Also, also, as we move into the era of biometrics, um, how, how dance will, will be utilized to its full advantage. Yeah, and it's very uh, interesting and uh, it's very good practice, I think, uh, because 
uh, it's not a traditional kind of uh, maybe a rehabilitation, but uh, it's a really creative uh, way and uh, quite useful for many people. And um, uh, about uh, the uh, quarantine period, uh, what... Um, are your plans uh, for <laughs> period after? Well, yeah. When, so when it all ends, <laughs> uh, we are we are discussing with our company, National Ballet of Canada, how we are going to present our next season and when. Um, everyone there has been very creative and really tried to uh, remind ourselves of our solidarity. And um, also Diana Vishnyova's project, uh, Context, uh, yeah. has, been, has reached out as well. And they're being very creative with what they're doing. I know that they'll present whatever they do will be of a uh, high level of quality. And uh, I just look forward to traveling and meeting all my friends again. And, um, but we check up on each other. And I would say... Uh, trying to find positives in the quarantine is a good thing. So trying to figure out what happens when everything stops for a minute, the economy or uh, your own rhythms, you know. Now I'm teaching ballet classes to people in Japan. Um, so waking up at a different time of day and um, the schedule is completely different, but um, it's it's an important time to spend time alone and figure out figure out what happens when you just also look at your body when you just stop moving you know and move a little slower maybe the frames move a little slower and you notice things that you didn't notice before right now to be honest I'm just cleaning my house every day <laughs> and finding new spots to clean and then finding spots in my ballet technique that needed cleaning <laughs> it's also the good thing and yes uh, many of us uh, I think fa found some new things inside ourselves and uh, new abilities and uh, different new skills maybe mm. because um, for example I uh, have just started to, to draw uh, di digitally on yes, the, I saw that. Yes, you saw, yeah. And, Amazing. Um, and I have just started, so it's the quarantine way of... How does it feel? How does it feel to do that? Mm, quite, does, quite does it feel good? Yeah, yeah, quite interesting. And unusual a little bit. A little bit unusual. Yeah, yeah with um, this tool only. And oh, yes, okay. Not, not uh, with all brushes, not without, without okay. all the items. It's uh, quite interesting, uh, but, but unusual. It's uh, another thing uh, in comparison with traditional way. Uh, Are you sketching? Do you sketch dancers? Uh, yes. Oh, okay. Wow. Yes, and uh, I want to catch you too. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> That would be because fun. It's very interesting. It's very interesting to uh, look at um, movements, plastic uh, emotions uh, during um, different performances or trainings or something like this. And uh, I'm really interested in it. Uh, so I'm trying to catch to catch something. <laughs> yeah, to I catch. always find it so inspiring when somebody is able to come and catch the emotion of the second it yeah. quickly yeah. in the sketch or even yeah. the emotion yeah. of a uh, two-hour period, you know, and put it into one drawing or sketch or a piece of yeah. art. So, yeah, I look yeah. forward to seeing yeah. it. Uh, I practiced during um, the masterclass of Xander Parish in the studio studio context uh, yes. and uh, I uh, tried to sketch some poses, some plastics yes. and it was more or less successful. More okay, less. well, that's quite good. That's good. I look yes. forward to seeing them. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. And the uh, last question. Uh, what can you advise uh, to people who are not so optimistic now as you are, as we are trying to be? Um, what, uh, not what to do maybe, what to try? <laughs> well, actually, um... I know it's not an easy time. I know it's one of the first times for, for a long period where um, people are sort of uh, globally affected and uh, trying to fight something together. Uh, I think I, I always go back to dance because dance uh, for me has always been a way of discovering maybe the positive side of something. Um, and moving i mean i think it's really important to exercise and move as much as possible uh just for the brain and um i know we can't dance as much together right now because it's uh because of distancing uh we will be able to i'm sure but slowly um i think it's great to talk about gratitude and to write down what we are what we are grateful for and maybe some wishes for the future and um I, I make sure that I, I dance at least once a day, every day. So that doesn't mean just doing a ballet bar in my kitchen. It means, um, which is important too, but that's not why I'm a dancer. <laughs> um, I try to really look, look into, you know, why and when I started dancing and make sure I keep myself inspired as much as I can and, and dance as much as I can, no matter what it is. So learning new styles, always fun. And now it's quite uh, accessible on Instagram. So there's a lot of styles I haven't learned and I would like to, to try. And someone's asking if I sing. Yeah. Um, I sing in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Only. Um, I sing at karaoke in, in, in Japan. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't say I'm an incredible singer, but I definitely like to pretend that I am sometimes, <laughs> but only in my own home. Yeah, um, I, I like I like the range of. Actually, that's an, a really cool question because um, yeah. when I was a kid, you were asking about uh, some inspirations for dancing, yeah. and I was saying that I'm inspired by actors. But another thing that I was inspired by, which is so weird, was I just put on a record of Whitney Houston. Yeah. I, my parents had this record and the cover was so alluring. So I was just like, what is this? And I just figured out how to put a record and put the needle on. Yeah. And then yeah. there was like all these like crazy hits. And I was so struck at that time. I've, I've heard a lot. I had already heard a lot of music, popular music, but I was so struck by the range of her voice. Like, the, the exactness of it and the range of it. So I just thought like, I can't do anything except dance. Like, this is what I would like to be in a ballet or a dance performance, you know? And I was really yeah. young and telling my parents this and they were like, okay, I mean, like you do what you have to do. Um, but yeah, it was the same for Whitney Houston and for Billie Holiday, the jazz musician. I was so impressed by the way that they hit me in many parts of my body. Like it was like, I didn't understand why I was responding to this. So, uh, so I tried to sing all of those songs, but I'm definitely not uh, is as in control of my voice as they were. And I whistle while I work. I work, yeah, that's true. I do whistle too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you for questions. <laughs> and yeah. uh, um, thank you for our today's conversation, our today's talk. Uh, I hope um, we will do some interesting things in future too. And um, uh, I hope uh, to see your dancing. Um, I don't know where and when, but... Um, are you in St. Petersburg? Are, are, yeah. are you in Moscow now or St. Petersburg? Uh, uh, in St. Petersburg. Uh, okay, so yeah, I was I was supposed to be there in June, yeah. but unfortunately, I have to wait to see the White Knights until another time. 
Yeah, so, I hope you will come. And, yes, thank you. Uh, you show your um, inspiration and your uh, really amazing uh, way of understanding ballet, not only dancing like um, technique, but understanding ballet. And uh, I hope uh, it will be quite soon. Uh, maybe so. not, not yes. in some years because. Well, it's great that we got to do this today. I'm happy we got yes. to do this today. Yes. Yes, thank I you. Have to do. And uh, thank you so much. The video will be saved now. And uh, I hope many people will be able to see our interesting, really interesting talk. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. Thank you. thank you so much. Bye. And greetings to all of your viewers. Bye. Bye-bye.